the record button. Okay, thank you once again, everyone, for joining on Saturday morning uh, for the, our uh, another session on Agile series. So we have been, as I told, we have uh, you know, in our earlier sessions also this series, uh, series two, uh, we have picked up a little bit more uh, advanced topics uh, when compared to the series one, and we have good, good uh, Agile coaches, good leaders uh, coming to our session and uh, talking on various. Uh, uh, topic related to Agile world. So for those who are joining uh, freshly today, uh, you can, uh, if you have missed uh, our previous sessions, uh, you can go to our uh, YouTube channel, PMA Policy Hyderabad Chapter PMA PCC, uh, where you can find the playlist uh, on your screen. If you see, there is a playlist for uh, uh, Agile Series 1 and Agile Series 2. Agile Series 1, we have covered around nine uh, sessions. And uh, in series two, we are now at the seventh uh, session here. And only thing that you will gain the uh, insights and knowledge, but not you will not get the PDU credited. But I would highly recommend if you are really wanted to, you know, learn a lot of stuff in agile world, please do utilize these videos. Uh, uh, we have speakers, uh, various speakers covering on the lot of uh, topics on agile. So. Before I, I hand it over to Rajiv, I just wanted to give a quick uh, glimpses or a trailer launch for our uh, upcoming Agile conference. Let me play this uh, one minute video and then I'll introduce uh, Rajiv and hand it over to session to you. Okay. Here we go. That was trailer launch, and with that, I will go ahead and introduce our speaker for today, uh, Raju Jain, who is a versatile, experienced uh, agile leader. He is a program manager, product manager, and agile coach. So, as a part of our journey, uh, when I approached Rajiv, uh, what could be the potential topic? We have discussed this and come up with this very interesting topic, uh, elevating agility, navigating the path to business agility. And also, which is which is little bit uh, connected to our conference theme of our upcoming Agile conference theme as well. And uh, with that, over to you, Rajiv. I'll, I'll uh, pass it on to you and then... Thanks, Varai. Yeah. Uh, am I audible? Uh, just yep, reconfirming. Yep. Yes, okay. yes. Let me share my screen and let me know once you're able to see this. Yeah. Okay, is screen visible to all? Yes. Great. So, thanks, Vinay. Thanks, PMI, PCC Hyderabad chapter, for allowing me to share my experiences once again. I think for the PCC, it is first time. So why I use the, maybe why I confused the two because um, uh, last year I was uh, creating the question bank for PMI teams, right? <laughs> so that's the reason I got confused. Okay, great. So uh, today's session is a bit of um, uh, a, not the IT agility part, it's beyond IT agility part. Because uh, as per my agile coaching experience, whenever we talk about agility, we have just we just move around IT, IT, IT. On one side, we are talking about an agile organization. We are talking about uh, IT business alignment. So that's the maximum limit we go to. After business, 
we just stop there. But within business also, I don't know how many of you have experimented anything even at the business part. Forget about the pre-sales, actual sales, the marketing, or uh, maybe the uh, RFP team, or maybe the team who are actually involved in the in the strategy formation, right? Beyond McKinsey level, right? Uh, all this group four people, right, who create the strategy beyond that, right? So, any of you have any experiences in agility beyond IT? Or are we just focused on IT, IT, IT? Any of you have any experiences in that? Right. Rather, I've even seen most of the time, not just IT, only the development part of the IT. This is what I've also seen, right? The requirement gathering is still happening traditional way. Deployments are really still happening the traditional way. Release team is still separate. And uh, only the development is happening in the agility. Right? These are my experiences. And this is uh, valid for all, all the cases. And then we talk about, yeah. we don't get benefits. We are not getting the outcome. Are we using the true agility? Or are we just doing a, uh, that uh, one of my friends uses the lipstick agility, right? Lipstick agility or uh, these are the words which are very much common. So let's see if I can provide some insights on how agility, the business agility is different from agility. And it's not, not even the tip of the iceberg, right? We'll just touch base, right? Just see, when we talk about the agility in IT, we need days and days, and we are talking about the, the org level, definitely, right? Not in the tip of the iceberg. It's right? something for you to start thinking, especially if you are into the delivery, especially if you are into the uh, coaching part. Maybe Scrum Master, you get some idea. Right? Those who want to project management, program management, delivery management, release management, or who are actually into coaching, right? Maybe they get more idea what they can actually implement also. So let me try some of my, sharing my experiences on this part. So elevating agility, navigating the path to business agility. So this was a funny, the rather catchy uh, topic suggested by Vinay. My was very simple one. So thanks Vinay for this. I'm sure I'm not uh, revisiting everything. I'm sure mo most of you must have read this kind of definition. It's Cambridge or dictionary. What is agility all about? Ability to think quickly, learn right ways of planning. Right. So all these kind of definitions you must have seen multiple times. Even this one. Uh, ability to change the body position. These are more specific for the people who are into the sports part, right? Because we're talking about agility. We're not talking about IT agility. We're talking about agility as a, a at a high level. Okay. A rapid response, a rapid whole body movement, right? Whole body movement. And we are just moving fingers or hands, not the whole body, not the organization. Change of velocity, right? We talk more about velocity than anything else. So these are the things we usually talk about. Integration, coordination, combination, velocity, response to similarity, right? We talk a lot about these points. Any other point that comes to your mind which you usually talk about in terms of agility? And what do we do to for this kind of agility? Any other points which comes to your mind? Maybe you don't need to give the complete statement. Words, quick jargons or quick keywords that comes to your mind apart from this. And if you want to share something else. So, and when we talk about the agility, in, right, We these are the things we usually talk about, correct? For transformation, mindset, organizing teams, managers to leaders. Yes, uh, the MVP mindset, quick pivot, uh, Google, I'll say that part, right? MVP mindset part. Micromanagement, psychological safety, cultural changes, all these big jargons. We we keep preaching, we keep talking. We could, if you're a scrum master or project manager, you might be hearing these words. 
if you are a delivery head or if you are a program manager or if you are an agile coach, you might be preaching these words, right? correct? Depending on your role, these are the common jargons we keep overhearing. Anything else we talk about when we say talk about the agile transformation? Silos, motivation, dream bonding, and uh, very recently I still remember uh, the discussion where one of the uh, senior MD is making a statement, Raji, why do we need to talk about the motivation and the psychological safety, right? These are uh, these are the individual persona. Yes, Vikash, good point, cross-functional teams, right? So uh, th these are the things good catch, good trading. So this confirms you read the points very carefully. <laughs> Thanks, Vikash, for that. Okay, so, uh, so, but how many of you have actually seen the implementation of these arcades? Have you even seen the implementation? Honestly, I have not seen. We do talk, we do preach. So it's more like a religion where uh, you, you, you continue preaching, but the practice implement, but implementation is far from reality. And uh, since we are focused only on the IT part, maybe that's the reason we don't see the real benefits of adopting the agile principle. So let's see how the business agility comes into the picture for this. What is your interpretation or understanding of doing the agile business? So any of you want to uh, unmute and call out? Your understanding of doing a job versus being a job. Any volunteers for that? Mostly, it's uh, same as what you were earlier sharing. That being agile is mostly perceived, uh, in my opinion, is as a being a fast, having a quick response to something. And one more term, which is also like uh, I know is uh, resilience. Like if we fail fast, then we can get up faster. And if we start changing or do corrective actions in business or any department, then it will, uh, uh, it helps basically. I mean, so that is how my like kind of. Uh, okay. So, but uh, uh, fail fast is a different part. Maybe doing agile and, and being agile. Hmm. Your interpretation is uh, maybe uh, if you repeat Being that fast, part, uh, taking a quick actions and taking quick actions. That, uh, that's your interpretation. Any yeah. of you differ from his interpretation? Any of you want to share your understandings or interpretation of doing Ajay versus being Ajay? Okay. No volunteers. Guys, you're into Agile. Even if it's wrong, nobody is going to cut your appraisal for that. So you're free to experiment your uh, inter interpretations. And uh, let's use fail fast here also. Any of you want to try? Yeah, being agile is basically just following agile. Whereas doing agile is kind of mindset where uh, it's it's uh, true and true uh, in, in the sense like you're not just using those ceremonies, using that uh, um, what Agile principles or uh, values say, whereas you implement them, you uh, through and through in the organizational level, you utilize them so that organization will get benefit out of that Agile process rather than uh, getting fruits of, uh, fruits of the implementation. Okay. I might not be giving you correct in, uh, thinking what I'm uh, thinking, but it's it's like in a simple way you need uh, to put it, uh, you're going to a place with a, with a, with a, in a formal uh, scenario, you're going to a, a meeting or conference with a uh, formal dress, whereas you go to a meeting to showcase that's the difference. Okay, that's your interpretation. So, and may I give a yeah. try? What? 
you know, doing is something because I'm in this profession and because uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a child programmer, project manager, and I'm forced to do, and I'm doing it because there are all these ceremonies or all these activities that are part of a child. Being agile, I believe, is, you know, I, I am that. And then, you know, I practice those principles, those 12 principles. I believe in those pillars. Um, and then, you know what, I I exhibit in every act and I believe it and that the way of agile living. And so good. that is agile. Good one, good one. I really like this interpretation and quite aligned to my interpretation. And uh, in the interest of time, we need to move on, but good one. And uh, what's your name? The last one who was? Vishnu, Vishnu Kiran. Vishnu. Raji. So yeah, Vishnu, uh, you, were, you were quite near to my interpretation on this part. Maybe if you want, you can search my article on this also, Doing Agile versus Being Agile on the LinkedIn. There's an article also, you can look for that, where I've given a detailed explanation of the differences. In very brief, so something similar to what Vishnu said, uh, Doing Agile is about following the processes, right? And... Uh, being agile is about mindset, values, and principles part. Which one is easier to change in all these five? Which one is the easiest to change? And which doing, one is the most difficult? Doing is easy, being is difficult. Doing, doing is easy and being is difficult. And being is also right. Mindset takes the priority, right? The, the, the takes the upper hand, right? This is the most difficult part, right? Yeah. And process, tools and process are the easiest part to change. Right? And uh, I don't know how many of you have overheard these statements. I've heard maybe hundreds or maybe thousands of times. We are trying to change the mindset or people need to come with a change mindset. Or another could be, we could not change the mindset, hence we could not get the values. Right? Mindset has to be changed first. Guys, you are touching the wrong code to start with. Can you really change the mindset on the day one? If you can't, why are you even touching the mindset on the day one? Why are you even talking about the mindset on the day one? Are you using this as an excuse of your failure of not getting the benefits? Think again. For me, whoever is making these statements right that mindset has to be changed first chances are they are not the one who can give you the real benefits of adopting agile ways of work right this is the adoption part the doing agile is the adoption part being agile is the adaptation part adoption is easier adaptation is difficult Just think, when we could not make the IT teams adopt agile ways of working, if they start doing some scrum events or some Kanban events or maybe some uh, safe events, we start proclaiming we are agile. Guys, you have not even started doing agile. How much time? We have good time. Uh, do we have any Street players here, uh, uh, let me give my interpretation of street players. Those who, who have played some team sports at their streets, maybe cricket in their street, football in their street, right? not in the playground. Do we have any such uh, players here in the call today? Anyone? No one, you must, it's not that you are playing now. You must have done during your school days, college days. You must have done. Okay, so Sangeet, Gopur, Satya, guys. And which sport? Was it cricket or something else? Okay, Satya, cricket, one, two, three, four. We have many crickets, uh, no, football and athletics. Athletics is not more of not a, more of a team play unless until you are into the relay, relay list. More of an individual part. So, any of you recall 
खो खो गुड वन गली क्रिकेट यस गली क्रिकेट इज द वन right because i did stop using gali cricket previously i used to use the gali cricket because uh, when you are talking to international audience it becomes difficult to explain the gali part <laughs> okay so uh, uh any of you recall any specific rule of your gali of your straight gali danda uh, my favorite game i used to be an expert champion in that kid vishnu and i still remember i uh, i took one of the guys to almost 1 km entire team was almost 1 km traveling with me in the that gilly danda part <laughs> okay uh one drop one drop catch one step catch boundaries gilly danda uh, four if it's still if it crosses the street yes and whoever gets the bat right by default that person becomes the batsman who should be will be batting the first <laughs> right these this kind of rules were very prominent correct uh what if i pick one player from each gully i play i pick each player one player from each gully and create a new team and they start playing together without any discussion coordination next year what may happen what can you anticipate what, what may happen in that case each gully has two rules correct there will be conflicts right because they all don't agree on the same rules mm -hmm. and uh, yes i think they don't have any bonding or team spirit yes, conflict like chaos yes right yeah so chaos conflicts right and uh, confusions everything will be there are we not doing similar things in our agile and can any one of you relate any such thing in agile are we not doing similar things in agile also yeah any examples that you can relate to so basically uh the candidate uh, is like uh, there is a attrition it is going through bad attrition and all those things the last mm -hmm. two three years we have seen that candidate is going we need a new candidate new candidate just arrived but he doesn't have the other old candidate already left there was not enough kt and all he was rushed okay. to the project now he is there okay this is a five year old project and he has been like there is some legacy these and that and is asked to perform that okay we are agile team let's do it i mean let's nail it down but then uh, i like i can understand i mean uh, having a new Great. person directly coming into Great. team you are able to relate you are able to relate exactly. good, then good. performance Others. is difficult na no? i mean like absolutely, you said that i totally echo i totally echo right yeah. and we will discuss what can be done right anyone else who is able to relate want to share just in few words any thing that you are able to relate and want to explain or share your example of this relation part now let me re relate this directly to the agile ways of working those who are the scrum masters do you have your working agreement ready have you ever created a working agreement for your team even if it's created right are they will are the part uh, are the team members part members or scrum team members aware of it if i ask for dod dr everybody will say we have it who created that when was the last time you visited that is it not evolving how do you actually use dod and drs just by having for the name say who else know about your dod and drs these are the important artifacts and we don't in a potential to why i am discussing all these points because we are totally it focused majority of us are doing agility in the it how would, how the discussion that's related goes here we'll revisit after a few minutes
What is business agility? How it is different from agility which we are preaching in our organizations? A people-centered organization about capability. I am not reading each and every statement, right? I am holding the keywords, right? Deliver value, compete, thrive, responding to change, emerging opportunities, digitally enabled. Is anywhere do you see the word IT here? IT is one of the subsets. And we have implemented business agility only in IT. We talk about behaviors, we talk about freedom. I'm sure you must have seen what kind of freedom we have in the agility also. You must might be knowing better than me. You have your own experiences. Flexibility, what flexibility you have, you must be knowing. Purpose part. How many of you even know the purpose? Forget about the people who are implementing it. Do we even know the purpose? And business agility talk about these words. We are talking about capabilities, behaviors, ways of working, resilience to achieve the purpose. When the purpose itself is not defined, from where the business agility will start. Next business agility which I have seen in the organization is business IT alignment. We talked about our business IT alignment has increased, increased, great, perfect. But what has increased because of this? Now we are talking to the customers. Okay, think again. Are you talking to customer or are you talking to product owners? There is a big difference between the two words, or maybe product managers. So are you actually aligning the business and IT? And at times I've seen business is nowhere to the picture. They are some third party vendors or IT is some third party vendors. And then we'd say it's business IT alignment. Guys, business and IT even don't know about each other. Forget about all these things. And we're still saying that we are, we had adopted business agility. So when you are not able to bring the two teams together with this and IT, and we are talking about the agility at the org level, is there anything else beyond the business IT alignment? What about HR? Any role to play in transformation? What's HR role in transformation? Why do we need that? Any of you have seen HR working with your transformation team? I have not seen even once. And whenever I talk about bring onboarding them, I feel a lot of resilience, a lot of pressure, a lot of backups. But it takes time to bring them on board. But why do we need them? Let's revisit. We talk about these organs, correct? Psychological safety, motivation, reward recognition, manager to leader, right? Evolving policies, increasing stress. Is HR not responsible for addressing these topics? Why everything on Agile Coach? Agile Coach is not a Ramban. You have to include multiple entities when you are talking at the org level. If you approach HR as an Agile Coach, oh, don't come to me. That's for IT, not for me. Can you actually create a psychological safe environment without involving HR? Can you keep changing your hybrid policies, evolving policies without involving HR? Can you change your reward and recognition without involving HR? If you can't, then why they are away? Why they are not part of your transformation team? Another example. What about l and What's l and role in this? We might be able to relate some of the aspects. But what is the l and role in this? Do we need l and in transformation? Yeah, that should be essential because uh, from top to bottom, everyone needs to 
uh, adapt to the new things, learn new things and implement. So entire training uh, and then that implementation and outcome all has to be well structured, well maintained throughout the business. Great, all the roles great, designation. Great, good, good point, Chintan. And adding few more points to it, right? Hmm. We are talking about highly customized training. We're talking about leadership from manager to leader. These content will be created by whom? l &D part. Hmm. External vendors will be invited by whom? The, again, the l &D part. We talk about a lot of assessment surveys. There are a lot of HR trainings beyond the self-paced videos. So guys, in case your l &D team has created hundreds and thousands of self-paced videos and expecting your managers to turn into leaders after going through that training, Please stop doing that. Start challenging the system. Don't accept the system as it is. By challenging, it's not that I'm going, I'm, I'm requesting you to go and tell you, see, you stop doing this part. Not that part, right? We all are concerned with our appraisals also. Okay. So it's about questioning part. What is the value that we're getting? Can you really convert or transform a manager to a leader by attending two days training? Can you really change someone's mindset by asking him or her to attend a virtual training? For sure not. Just think of another example in this part, right? You have created maybe a scrum training customized to your specific team. Your team has around 500 folks in 20 different locations, including 10 countries. Can you use the same content for 10 countries who are culturally different? Can you or can you not? Maybe you can type in the chat window. Can you use the same content to for the Scrum training in 10 different countries. Okay, Amit says no. How about others? Still thinking? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Maybe doing ping pong, ping pong, ping pong, whatever works. <laughs> Head, tail. Leela, you nailed it. Right? Satish. You nailed it, actually. And I still remember we created same content for 10 different locations. It took all of our, us new Scrum. For me, it was just half day job to create content. And it was 20 days job to agree on the same content for 10 different locations. And as rightly pointed out by Satish, the challenge was the, the location-specific example. In China, example will be different. UK, examples will be different. Australia, examples will be different. Within India, I'll be using different examples in South and different examples in North. That's how we customize the same. This is where this is one of the examples where L&D and transformation team need to work together. We discuss about HR, we discuss about L&D. Are you able to relate the dots now? Any of you, any questions coming up? Because that's the intent. I'm not giving deep insights, just showing some tips, providing some pointers for you to start thinking differently. Moving on, what about the recruitment? How recruitment is impacted in the business? Has anyone done any recruitment, introduced recruit, uh, agility in any of the recruitment teams? Anyone? By introducing stand-up, please don't say that I have introduced agility in my recruitment team also. That's not an introducing any, uh, 
agility. I have seen many L and D teams making statement. We all are agile. What do you do? We do stand ups. What is the business value? Oh no, no, that's out of question. <laughs> Not in the curriculum. So coming back to the recruitment part. Are you still following the same age old ways of hiring? Which was followed by 20 years? I have seen the hiring of many organizations. Right? Bombarded with reports. Give me this report. Give me that report. Why do you need that? No, no. Everybody was, is preparing. We have been preparing from last 20 years. But for what? No, I don't know. We are preparing. For what? I don't know. Especially in the service organizations. I think half of their time goes into only the reporting part. Same candidate, profile exists in all the databases, interviewed in six different teams within the same organization. Nobody has feedback from each other. Has anyone experimented grooming the interviewers? Has anyone heard about that? Do we need to train the interviewers to take the interview? Oh, I am doing for now 30 years. Why do I need to be trained? This is another place where agility is very important. When the requirements keep changing, when the teams keep changing so rapidly, the recruitment team need to catch up with that. I just touched base three elements. The recruitment, the HR, and the L&D. Any one of you are aware of any organization where at least these three teams are part of the transformation? Or are they still in silos? If these teams are not there, can we even dream of business agility? Great Abhishek, finance. Uh, I was about to touch that part also. Each, depending on the type of organization, if it's a soft software, if it's a captive, it's a services, a production, manufacturing, telecom, each team might be having different set of departments. It could be auditing, logistics, all these departments are there. Majority of us only focus on marketing. Within marketing also, I have not seen pre-sales to be aligned with the transformation team. Only the people who are executing the orders or the contracts, they are getting aligned. That is the maximum limit I have seen. Business development. Do you know that you can even either your transformation team can increase the business of an organization? If not, maybe you can come back to me and can help you on that part. If you are looking any help in any of these, but how to onboard the auditing part, the logistics part, HR part, recruitment part. Forget about all these parts. How many of you know the entire release process is agile? Don't tell me we are using safe. Every quarter we have release. The actual deployment, many times I have seen those teams are nowhere into the safe train. That's a completely different entity. Nobody knows where this sits. So in the agile world, we are talking about business agility and we are not able to go beyond 
IT agility and that to the actual development part. Let's revisit the definition. Set of organizational capabilities, behaviors, and ways of working that affords your business the freedom, flexibility, and resilience for the purpose. Part. Now, are you able to relate some of the keywords which are there in the business agility definition that needs to be addressed if you are actually thinking of making your organization agile, not just the development team agile? Any questions that come to your mind based on these discussions? Yes, it is a journey, not a destination. Sometimes you say we are 60% agile, 70% agile, 80% agile, 10% agile. For me, it's a journey. It's binary. Either you're agile or you're not agile. Now, go beyond IT. If you are really looking forward to read the benefits of the transformation, that's what I wanted to share in terms of things. Any questions anybody's anybody having, anybody want to discuss or call out, or maybe is it really possible? Because I have experimented all these things and I have received good benefit, uh, good outcomes. A few things which I can share. We have worked with HR to introduce agility in OKRs. We have introduced new roles, HR being part of the reward and recognition. Recruitment revamped the entire recruitment process of the big MNCs, those who were to the mass hiring part. Entire recruitment process, right? And uh, for the first time, which I overheard, is um, that uh, recruitment folks, right? those who are following up for the give us your time for the interview slot, right? They said, for the first time, we are not following up for the interview slots. We have over commitment. For the first time, they were not overburdened. For the first time, they said, we are not required to create which are reports which are not adding any value. For the first time, they are not required to goof up the reports, just to show the better numbers. And for the first many uh, teams made a statement, for the first time, we had a team activity beyond HR activities, the R level activities. If somebody is making these statements, don't you think they will feel motivated to give best whatever they can? Do you really need to motivate those people who are coming up with this kind of feedbacks? So motivation does not come by making a statement or by giving some freebies. You need to create an environment where the team feel motivated. Your freebies can be a point of attraction, but not to keep them motivated and engaged for long. Any questions, any points, any of you want to discuss? Uh, I'll go. So it seems like a lot many things, uh, <clears throat> it's like, a, it's a very dependent, it seems like a, on a person uh, to me, I mean, because the, some mindset and all, let's say if I develop my mindset for myself, then cultivating the mindset for others and having a similar, uh, like kind of a set of behavior or enthusiasm about being agile and everything. Uh, to me, at this point of time, looks very uh, challenging. I'm not sure you have done so many other transformations. So what is the timeline usually it takes? And what all involvements, efforts, how big is this can be? I mean, uh, because on routine basis, all the department do their own function. Somewhere coordination they do at high level. But then what few things you have uh, questioned, raised the question, those are actually clicking, but then I don't know how that's possible. And I just want to understand maybe any case study or example, how long this takes and all that would be helpful. Very good, uh, very practical question, I'll put it this way. Uh, the 
there is no direct answer to this part, right? My okay. case study is, right, my three examples, all three are different. Somewhere, because it depends where you are, hmm. okay, what authority you have, what control you have. Second part, how serious is the management? Right. Okay. How serious is the management? Right. Third is how courageous you are. Hmm. How do you present the facts and data? Hmm. For me, whoever is investing money in hiring agile coaches, chances are they are interested. It's we end up showing up the wrong picture. Right. We give the wrong data. Which we, we 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 work like a typical consultant, right? To mm -hmm. keep everybody happy. Coaching is not about happiness. Right. Outcome may be happy. You can make happy by the outcome, but don't expect the journey to be happy or, or a rosier. Hmm. Right? We most of us don't have the courage to make a statement that the journey will not be rosier or happy. Right. Right. We show everything rosy. Oh, this will happen. This will happen. Everything will be good. Nothing will change. Then if nothing is changing, then why you're opting for agility? Hmm. Right. But uh, to some of the points which I can mention is do a lot of groundwork. We don't invest time in that. Right. right. How the departments are linked to each other. Right. The dependencies, the challenges. Right. Unless and until you have this data with you, you will be, you will never be able to make a statement that if we change this, this good, this good thing will happen because you don't have the data for that. And right. data you can only have once you do the groundwork. So don't start implementation on the day one. Spend time to understand the system and the system go beyond IT. Right? right? We, how many of us even know the entire release process from inception to deployment? I can challenge not even 10% of us. When we even don't know the release process itself for the one of the activities, how can we anticipate to bring different verticals together and knowing their dependencies. Right? That's where you need to invest time. And then your how you establish your rapport with the people, how to influence, all these things are part and parcel of our job. Right. Right? So uh, whoever is giving just a rosy picture, chances are he or she is not through with the real coaching or the real transformation part. That person could come from a Consulting background, not the hands-up experiences. That's my take on this part. I may sound a bit uh, rude, rude, but that's how I am. <laughs> I'm a coach. I'm not a consultant. <laughs> that, that is what is expected. Na? So we have to say uh, truth, not something which uh, makes others happy. Yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, at times, at times you have to make others unhappy. Again, uh, I'm not an ice cream seller. Hmm. Right, yeah. I can't make everybody happy, but yes, I can guarantee. After this, all the these these teams will be happy because of this. Yeah. But don't expect a rosier ride. Be ready for a bumpier ride. Right, that part. You have to call it out. It's not an underlying statement. It is a bullet number one for all my presentations. Right. Thank you. Good point, Chinta. Anybody else? Anything you want to discuss? Call out? Anything in the chat window? Are there any metrics, Amit? When you talk about the metric, what do you mean by that? Metrics of what? Yeah. So in IT, when we are doing Scrum, we have uh, lead time, backlog, health, churn, velocity, and all as a matrix, which by which we measure our progress. So. In this context, uh, uh, are there like are there any metrics on which we show improvement? Like all will depend on what they are tracking, right? And uh, 
for me who ever asking metric chances are that person is coming from the project management background who is asked by the senior leaders to give me reports just like an example which i shared oh we have been doing from last 20 years that the reason i need report for what purpose i don't know myself okay so uh, but again yes there are metrics you can quantify that the reason i was highlighting this part amit that be ready with the ground fact the reality and the data that they are capturing right and what improvisation can you show by changing or suggesting the transformed ways of work there are metrics lead time cycle time is applicable to all the processes right be it hr be it recruitment be it auditing they are applicable everywhere Yes, all depends on case to case basis, not a good general idea. Yeah, thanks. Okay. okay, Abhishek, a lot of points we got from session and adoption. Okay, thank you for that. Yes, Abhishek, that's the reason, right? If I can make you think, my purpose is solved, right? That's the only thing I had in mind when I opted for this topic. Agility, can you guide in HR? Abhishek, very much you can do that. Right, but again, we I think in the interest of time, we are almost on time, so I read the question it. So maybe you can reach me offline. I'll be happy to discuss those parts. That's all, guys. I'm assuming I'm able to share a few pointers which can help you to think differently now. And if you need any help, or if you want to transform your organization in the agile ways of working, from IT agility to business agility. I'm happy to contribute. I'm happy to share my experiences and maybe, but don't come to me. Uh, can you solve this problem without giving any data and facts? Okay, so because one point, I may have hundreds of questions before I can suggest something. And Vinay has already experienced this part with me multiple times. <laughs> Great, thanks Vinay. I think we're on time. Yes, yes. Let me share my screen back. Ah. You can see my screen right now? Yeah. Like journey, not destination. That is the slide we are seeing. Okay. I think we are seeing Rajiv's screen. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see my screen right now. Yeah. Okay. All right. I think yes. uh, that was really uh, interesting conversation, and thanks for bringing those points, Rajiv. Uh, especially agility matters at the organization level. At the organization level, what are the uh, pathway where we can you know uh, bring that real agility into the picture, not only sticking to the IT. Uh, that's a proper real definition for the business agility. Thanks for bringing out. And I, I hope everyone will agree with that. And more or less, we got the broader perspective, like how we can bring the, uh, that agility at the enterprise level rather than sticking to the, uh, the uh, one uh, department or one business level or uh, rather the IT level. Thank you for that. And then uh, thank you for taking some time to spend uh, you know, your valuable uh, thoughts uh, on this topic. In in uh, honor of uh, uh, you, uh, a ticket of five trees at the Trees for Tigers, Sundarban National Park, West Bengal, India, uh, we have planted. And uh, I will be sending you formal email where you will have the certificate detail and all. You can see the certificate number as also where we can with that number we can see the live uh, plantation state where uh, the uh, trees uh, uh, the five trees and uh, thank you once again for coming forward and taking up this session and looking forward for uh, you know, more uh, such sessions from you Rajiv and thanks for accepting uh, you know you know a invitation as soon as I reached you though it was short time but we could able to uh, make a make it out of it. Thank you very, very much on behalf of our PMI PCC chapter members and the board. And uh, yeah.
coming to the few announcements i have the upcoming workshops uh, regarding pmp and pma acp workshops please do con uh, contact our uh, director for academy sheshu uh, he, uh, he will be helping you with the dates and uh, fee and all and as you all know we have geared up for our uh, agile conference which is on december 9th to, uh, uh, venue is t hub and this year conference uh, this edition the conference theme is customer centric agility from startup to enterprise if you if you see that term agility that's where we we you know uh, looked for the uh, today's topic as well and uh, as a uh, what you call a benefit for this audience whoever joined today they can utilize this 10% discount uh, on on the registrations you can use this agile series 28 uh, code i have given the link in the chat uh, the mera events chat which is this code is applicable for only one day uh, and uh, in t hub we have limited uh, capacity for in person uh, of course the, this event is hybrid event uh, which is uh, like in person and uh, virtual uh, uh, participants and speakers as well for all the categories you can utilize this 10 percent discount code uh, okay uh, sorry for that today 12 a.m i think by end of the day it will be closed out so that is and and like for uh, for our chapter members, based on your PMA IDs, uh, our event team, uh, Gokul, will help us in getting one PDU auto credited for you in, in category of ways of working in next uh, couple of days or maximum within a week. And if you have any uh, questions on the uh, PDUs or any, any uh, anything related to this session, this session, please do con uh, contact me at a membership at pmapcc.org. And you can connect me uh, at double nine eight nine three four double eight seven eight. Before we close the uh, the for the day, I, I'll play with this again the uh, uh, trailer for our conference. Let's see for one more time. Vinay, can we connect uh, request for something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. I don't know whether you do it or not. Maybe if whoever can come online on the webcam uh, photograph. Yeah. Yeah, we can we can take that picture. Yeah. Yeah, maybe before the video, we can invite everyone and request whoever can come online and can click the photographs. Yeah, I'm I'm setting up that. So those who can, right? Maybe even if you are in your t-shirts and all, right? That should not be a problem. Okay, that's a good idea. One second, I stop the screen and then I can see the gallery view. I've Oh wow! So, Satya Narayan, Shriya, Anil, Pratap, Bhuraj. Great. We can see many faces. Even if you are not able to recollect when we meet in person, but definitely we'll have some memories to take away. I've taken a couple of them, and let me take one more also. Yeah. So now we have, I think, the high school. Yeah, wow, this frame looks really good. Thank you. Actually, I've been doing this since uh, since very, very long. Right? In all, all the conferences, we do this part. Yeah, yeah, I have taken that. Uh, thank you. Thank you for coming on camera. Thank you, everyone. Let me Great. See. Thanks. <clears throat> okay, let thank me you, everyone. I think me and Sati is becoming common in most of the Jal conferences. That's the way I see it. <laughs> 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 he's, he's, he's a very well known person in our agile community. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Great. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Vinay, please carry on. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, let, let me play this video, which is only one, one minute, and then we can call for the day.
Yep, that's it. And uh, thank you all for joining today on, on Friday morning as usual. And we'll come up with another topic in the next month uh, as a part of our Agile series. And as I said, please do utilize this code Agile Series 28 for registering for our Agile conference, which is coming up on December 9th in T Hub. And we have uh, Asutosh and uh, Praveen, Shravan, other speakers are lined up. We are slowly announcing our speakers. So a lot of interesting topics and it's a very good opportunity for networking, especially in the Agile world. Please do utilize the opportunity. And thank you everyone for joining once again. And I thank our events team and communications team uh, for uh, helping us to conduct this session very smoothly. Uh, thank you all. And see you next time. Until then, bye. Thank you, Rajiv, once again. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Bye.